good afternoon everybody uh, thank you for being here uh, today i am going to present an overview of uh, can protocol can subsystem in azure myself uh, navin shankar nalambati velingiri i am working as an embedded software engineer at uh, next big thing ag so i am currently working and uh, living in berlin so these are the topics i am going to cover today like what is can futures and application can bus architecture can subsystem in zephyr sample application and user space tools like can util to debug the software and what is can can stand for controller area network so it was initially developed by robert bosch and uh, now it has uh, become an international standard iso double one one eight nine eight for robust and reliable communication between electronic device it is a multi-master serial and broadcast bus meaning any node can send and receive the data to any other node in the network and all the nodes connected in the network can receive the message and it is a message uh, can is a message based protocol meaning it uh, it transmit message uh, in from in form of frames so the frame consists of uh, frame header payload and uh, frame tailor and can operates uh, uh, at different data rate from 125 kilobits per second to uh, 1 megabits per second depend on user application we can configure it to 125 or 250 or 500 kilobits per second so can futures uh, it's a multi master protocol and multi node architecture it's it provides a reliable ma message transmission so can utilizes a priority based arbitration meaning message id with lower id lower identifier value can preempt the message with higher identifier value on the bus and it has a built in uh, feature called error direction and uh, error correction it is uh, low cost and easy to implement it uses twisted path cable to transmit the differential signal to nodes applications uh, so because of it uh, uh, robustness uh, robustness real time capability and reliability can is used in various fields like automotive domain aerospace and aviation industrial automation building automation and medical device this is how a signaling looks like so basically it consists of uh, two uh, two signal like a can high and a can low so here we have a uh, high speed can voltage level so based on the specification like uh, this voltage level get varied uh, so it it transmit differential signal through uh, can high and can low it has two state dominant and recessive so during dominant transition uh, can high is driven to vcc and uh, can low is uh, driven to uh, ground and during recessive transmission uh, both the can high and can low is uh, driven uh, rest rest around 2.5 volt this is how our signaling look like and node this is how a node look like basically it consists of uh, three parts one is microcontroller second one is can controller and third one is uh, tra can transceiver so microcontroller responsible for uh, sending and receiving the message over can network and this can controller is intermediate between this microcontroller and can transceiver so whenever any message arrived on the can bus so this can transceiver transmit this level to can controller and this can controller wait until any uh, until the new message is arrived so once a new message arrived it triggers the microcontroller that hey i have a new message please collect it so then microcontroller will collect the new message so this is how a node will look like and this is uh, can bus architecture like in can bus architecture minimum uh, two node is required to establish a communication like to send uh, transmit and receive your data so here we have can a 
can be and up to can x. So number of can node is decided based on the cable length and uh, data rate. Yeah, and uh, so this can bus is terminated by a termination resistor. So it is connected between can high and can low. So it's used to suppress electromagnetic interference and provide noise immunity to uh, for data communication. CAN message. Uh, it CAN protocol transmit message in form, in form of uh, frames. So it can transmit the message. Uh, it, it follows as a broadcast type, meaning any node in the network can receive the message. And uh, it has a capability to whitelist which message it interested in. For example, uh, so for take a particular message ID like uh, one, two, three, or four, five, six, if it is interested in one particular message, it can filter those message alone. And it supports four different type of frames. One is data frame, second is remote frame, error frame, and over, uh, overload frame. And CAN message frame. So this is a general structure of a CAN message frame. It consists of a start of frame, frame header, control field, data payload, frame header, and end of field. So basically, there are two types of uh, frames. One is a standard one. Second one is an extended one. The key difference between standard and extended is uh, standard one uh, is an 11-bit identifier. Uh, extended is an, a 29-bit identifier, meaning standard one has a higher priority than uh, extended CAN frame on the bus. So, uh, like, uh, so far we saw about a classical CAN. Later, uh, Bosch, Robert Bosch introduced a new specification called uh, CAN FT. So here are the like, key differences between classical CAN and CAN FD. So data rate. Uh, classical CAN sub to one megabits per second, where CAN uh, FD supports up to eight megabits per second. The payload size is uh, eight bytes payload per frame. CAN FD supports up to 64 bytes payload per frame. Network length is 40 meter, and uh, CAN FD, because due to its high data rate, its network length is uh, limited to few meters. And again, the network length is based on number of nodes connected and data rate. Compactability. Classical CAN is not compactable with CAN FD, whereas uh, CAN FD is backward compactable with classical CAN, like meaning uh, classical CAN transmit the data to CAN FD. Uh, yeah. OK. So far, we saw about an CAN specification like architecture and bus architecture. Now we will concentrate on Zephyr driver model, like how the uh, device hooks into Zephyr, like into the system. So basically, it consists of uh, four layers, like application, CAN driver, CAN controller, and CAN transceiver. So whenever a user sends any data from application, it will transmit via CAN driver, and then CAN controller, it's uh, often part of a microcontroller. Sometimes it will be SPI connector. And again, the CAN controller transmit to CAN transceiver and vice versa. Zephyr also supports socket CAN based implementation. Uh, like uh, it provides user to in interact with a CAN controller with the socket APIs BST socket APIs like uh, socket, uh, send, receive, accept, bind, close, etc. So it is uh, compatible with Linux socket based implementation. And this socket is API is based on the Zephyr networking stack. So this is how the socket can looks like. Uh, so in between, it uses a networking core from the Zephyr. So how to add a CAN controller in the Zephyr? So first, we need to check whether there is an existing driver or not. If it is there, then we can expand it or adapt it, or otherwise, we need to uh, write our own driver. For example, first, we need to define a device tree 
and then implement a driver. And uh, if required, we need to write our own sample application and test cases. So, like uh, how the things are populated in most embedded devices like Linux and Zephyr are almost and always it's done by uh, device tree. So if you already know about something about uh, device tree, then you may be familiar with this kind of asyntax. So here I took an uh, MCP25, so which supports uh, CAN over SPY. So we, we need to use a SPY, so, so that's why I defined, so that's why uh, we need to define a spy node here and then uh, corresponding chip select pin. And afterwards, uh, this, uh, afterwards we need to define the CAN controller. So this CAN underscore zero is a device identifier for spy. So it's the first device connected over the spy bus. And below to that, we need to define the compatibility and compatible driver and spy maximum frequency, intra pin and the status. So this status controls whether this driver need to be enabled or disabled. And rich property, oscill oscillator frequency, bus speed, synchronization, and sample point, and maximum uh, transceiver support like maximum bitrate it can support. So these are the properties are defined under can know. So this is how a device declaration looks like. So I'm starting from the end of the file. So uh, most of the information from the device trees are populated here in the struct mcp2515 underscore config. And uh, next to that, uh, so we need to define this API device DT ins define. So it is initialized, it initializes during boot time and it creates a uh, device object. So basically uh, this macro requires init function, power, uh, power management function pointer and data pointer, config pointer and which init level it's need to be initialized and initialization priority basically from 0 to 999 and uh, function pointers for the particular driver. So in this case, can. So here is the initialization function. So first we need to get the config and device data and second we need to like uh, this M MCP25 is a connector over SPI bus. For, uh, first, we need to verify the SPI bus is ready. So once it's ready, afterwards we can configure the interrupt and uh, create a new thread. So basically, this thread is uh, used to handle uh, handle the interrupt. So whenever any uh, whenever any message is received, this scan controller trigger the host controller with the interrupt. Uh, so this thread is used to handle that interrupt. And device specific implementation like uh, setting, yeah, uh, setting modes like uh, normal mode or loopback mode or uh, some uh, data rate. So these things are initialized here. So, so this API will return either zero or negative value. Next to that, uh, it's a uh, function pointers like uh, how how we can interact with the CAN controller. So basically, CAN and CAN underscore driver API provides a set of APIs like uh, to get the capabilities, set timing parameters, stop the CAN transceiver, stop the CAN stop the CAN controller, stop the CAN controller, set the mode, send send the data, and uh, get the maximum filter rate, available filter rate, and uh, adding a new filter, removing a new filter. So these are the APIs uh, the CAN underscore AP driver provides. So this is how an application looks like. So the first we need to know about the device identifier. So once we know about the device identifier, then we can get the device uh, with this help of uh, macro called device dt get. 
so it will return the device structure so and afterwards we need to verify whether this device is ready or not so if it is not ready so it will return return here so this is come from this initialization function so for example if it is return zero then this function this if condition will this if condition will pass otherwise it will return here and next uh, we need to set set the mode for example it supports normal mode and uh, can loop back mode and other modes so here i am setting the loop back mode and next to that i am starting we need to start the can controller with this uh, device pointer set timing so for example if we want to change our data rate during run time so first we need to calculate the timing parameter so this timing parameter is calculated with the help of uh, data rate and uh, sample point so here the data rate is around uh, uh, 250 kilobits per second and sample point is 87.5 percentage usually the sample point is 87.5 percentage so if it uh, calculates the sample point and return zero then we can set the can set the timing parameter by stopping the can controller and afterwards uh, we can set the can timing then afterwards we can enable the can controller with the help of a can underscore start so this can underscore start will uh, like uh, it will reset the previous errors and uh, initialize the can transceiver ready for ready to send and uh, receive new messages and next to do that uh, send function so basically uh, like uh, with classical can we can send uh, eight bytes per frame so there is a structure to define message ID data length and uh, data and flag so here the message ID is a zero cross uh, one two three so it is a standard uh, ID and data length i'm setting it as uh, 8 bytes so here is the data so this is a 8 byte of uh, data and uh, we need to use this scan underscore send api to send this frame so this api accept device structure can uh, can frame structure and then timeout timeout value so and last two argument is uh, callback function and uh, last one is a uh, user data so this is a blocking API. Uh, if uh, if the if it uh, doesn't receive any acknowledgement from the any nodes, so it will return negative value. Or else, if it receive any uh, acknowledgement, it it will return zero. Until for 100 millisecond, it will wait for a. Uh, it will wait. Otherwise, it will return a timeout error. So this is a non-blocking API. So the one major difference between blocking and non-blocking API is uh, we can set our callback. And uh, so whenever we call this uh, API can underscore send, it will never wait for uh, any acknowledgment or uh, any errors. So this all handled in this uh, TX underscore callback. So receiving, uh, so how we can receive uh, data from CAN transceiver? So first, like uh, as I said before, CAN itself will provide uh, whitelisting or filtering the message, whatever we require. So we can set the, first we need to define which ID we, we want to, we are interested in and uh, what type of ID it is. So in this case, it is a standard mask and that is an api can underscore add or x filter so this will uh, set this filtering function so whenever any new data is arrived so this will be available in this callback function or x callback function but um, the user need to handle it uh, in in this callback function so if it is a long 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 execution then we either we need to schedule a new work or switch to new thread here 
and also it supports uh, message to uh, message to receive via message queues so first we need to define the name and priority so here the message message id is uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 it's a extender id and uh, the api is same like before but it is particularly for message adding a message queue filter so once it receives us a new message uh, like here is the infinite loop so one uh, it will wait for a new message so once a new message is received this uh, this will execute further so so far we saw about a driver implementation and a sample application so the next main thing is uh, how we can uh, debug this uh, like can based project uh, with some other tools like uh, that is an open source tool available called which is called can util so it is uh, helpful in uh, debugging and testing even we can create a small prototype so it provides us a set of tools like uh, can send so with this uh, tool we can send a single frame of a message and can dump so it is used to dump uh, dump the receive message or we can set the filtering option third one is a can can gen so it will generate a random traffic in the network can player so it will uh, so with this help of an can player so we can view the uh, log the data so and can snipper so it is uh, used to differentiate between the signals and can log server. So this is a simple example uh, to send and dump uh, our data. So for example, uh, we have our uh, can also, which is based on the Zephyr for, and uh, to debug this, to debug our Zephyr can node. So we need to have uh, some single board computer like uh, Raspberry Pi with uh, can controller and can transceiver connector so from uh, from that single board computer we can send uh, ca uh, we can send some can data to the network and uh, we can dump dump the data so if if our zephyr node sends any data so with this help of uh, can dump yep yep thank you any questions Any questions? Yeah. 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 Thank you for the presentation. Uh, as a new developer mm -hmm. who's using CAN, and we have some parts that currently support CAN. So if I am adding a derivative board, mm -hmm. let's say, and I'm using existing drivers, what would be the best recommendation for testing? Um, in terms of if I want to do a, a loopback, um, how much confidence can I have that the loopback is, you know, good enough implementation of this new target that I've implemented? Uh, you mean testing the new driver? Not a new driver, uh -huh. uh, a new board that is using an existing driver. Ah, okay. Then the best way to, uh, is to test with the some readily available set up like a Raspberry Pi. So for example, you need to configure it to normal mode. So it will transmit and receive the message over CAN bus and another opposite side we will like you will have a Raspberry Pi. So it will receive that message. So, so that is the so quickest way to verify. So the best would be to have two boards uh -huh, uh -huh, running, yeah. running Zephyr? Mm, uh, no, one, one is running with the Zephyr and the second one is uh, some readily available single board computer. Okay, uh, that seems. Sorry. You, you you want something to add? Yeah, I, I want to comment on this. Um, under Linux, you can uh, use can gen not to only generate random data, but you can uh, generate uh, data with increasing content. So uh, you can uh, the data would be one, the next frame, the data would be two, and so on. 
so you can send this uh, with uh, well, configurable delay from a Linux system, and then on your Sapphire you can, uh, yeah, check if you receive uh, can frames with increasing content, for example. But, but my, my question was, we, we have some tests and samples in Zephyr. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right, so if I have to use, let's say, any of those tests, do I need two boards to test? Those uh, definitely, I will recommend uh, two boards to test. Uh, I'm not confident with this uh, loopback mode, so sometimes uh, uh, it will show false positive results. Right, right. So, so say I have one board that mm -hmm. I know is good. You know, we have implemented CAN and it's working. Mm -hmm. I have another board that is my board that I've added. Can I use? Yeah, sure, sure. Zephyr running on both boards? Yes. Uh -huh. Do I cross the wires? Is that all I have to do? Like run CAN RX to CAN TX? Uh, yep. No, uh, CAN is a bus. Uh, you connect CAN high to CAN high and CAN low to CAN low and uh, add a termination resistor on both ends of the bus. And uh, then you can plug in as many CAN systems as you want to some extent. For example, you can uh, test your two Sapphire boards sending data back and forth, and you can uh, add another Linux system in between, or at the end, it doesn't matter where, and uh, have a second opinion on what's going on the bus. Uh, maybe quick addition to that. Uh, so the loopback tests, which are used in all the uh, test, internal testing in, in Zephyr, they are suitable for testing all the CAN controller stuff inside the MCU, but uh, if the transceiver doesn't work, you would not realize, so then you would have to build up a whole system with the bus, I would say. Just want to relay on a comment from Sam Edge, um, coming in from virtual. He's saying that because of the differential bus nature of CAN to do proper on the wire, uh, loopback testing, you need to two CAN interfaces either on the same board or two different ones. Uh, you can get CAN, USB CAN interfaces for the PC, which can be driven from Python, uh, specifically Peak, Total Phase, KVASR, and CANDO. So just adding into that comment. Right. So we do have a sample in, in uh, we have quite substantial API testing for the loopback mode of, of the various uh, CAN controller drivers. But as Martin mentioned before, if you go beyond the, the controller driver itself and want to verify a new board, as you're asking, Mahesh, um, we have the, the sample, the CAN driver counter sample, and this does a ping pong of messages between two uh, CAN controllers using the actual bus infrastructure. And you can do this between either two Cipher uh, bus, uh, two Cipher boards uh, running this, you can use um, a USB to CAN controller uh, connected to a PC, and you can actually do this, you can run the Cypher sample uh, on the Linux as a native POSIX binary, and use that to access a native Linux socket CAN interface, accessing the USB con CAN controller, and doing the ping pong messages to the board. So this was added by Martin, uh, the, the native Linux uh, CAN controller a dash and layer. So we do have the means for, for doing what you're asking here, Mahesh. Um, thank you for the talk. Um, it's been a while that I've done something with CAN, but if I remember correctly, um, typically CAN controllers um, can have written the filters in, into the hardware. Um, the filters that you just showed, mm -hmm. will that be also typically written into the CAN controller itself, or yeah. Will it be executed in software? Uh, it's uh, written into CAN controller itself. So it's not a software, it's a hardware. Thanks. <laughs> and if we can just add a, it, it depends really, because some CAN controllers have a lot of these CAN RX uh, hardware filters available, and some have like one. So, so the the typical solution in Zephyr is if you have an, um, 
a small amount of RX hardware filters available. We do a software QU, uh, software filtering, uh, and this is supported by the CAN driver framework. So you, it's, you basically just set the CAN controller to receive everything like they do in Linux and disregard the, the hardware filters, and then you do the f filtering in software. This is, of course, less effective on a microcontroller than it is in, in a larger uh, CPU for, for Linux. So you generally want to avoid those controllers. Thank you. And if you found any uh, issue and or if you develop any driver, please pre feel to open your new PR. And once again, thank you for joining. <laughs>